Okay, folks, so here we are in the, in the sugar shack, sap house, you know, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is the evaporator. And uh, I had a subscriber to the channel ask that I do uh, just a little bit of a video on exactly how this works. Um, obviously, the, the fire is in this area here. You know, the doors, you've seen the doors on the videos before. And that's, you know, the firebox. And there's, see, there's the front of the front. Okay, and I don't have a very big fire in it right now because I didn't want too much steam. Uh, I wanted to be able to show kind of what's going on. Um, the two front pans, so this pan and that pan um, are what are called cross flow pans. You can see that the, you know, the, the dividers go this way across the across the evaporator and they're connected with some uh, uh, sanitary tri clamps with some pipe and the this here is a thermometer where zero reads uh, the boiling point of water and the the valve that's next to it is where i take off syrup and the other thermometer there is just another one to check with. Okay. And that back pan is what's called a flue pan. And this particular one is drop flue. So that means that the, there are basically fins or drops that go below the upper surface of the arch. Okay. The arch is this you know, this from here down, okay? And so I have five inch drops that go below that seven foot long flue pan that go down into the fire, okay? And as, uh, you know, the wood burns, it goes uh, up the, you know, out the chimney, up and out the top of the, you know, the building and one of the big questions I've gotten is how do you regulate the level of the sap that's in the pans? And that's right over here. Okay, you see that this pipe coming in? My storage tank is out uh, outside up on a, a small hill just behind the sap house. And that that pipe goes to this box here, okay? And that box has a float in it. See, here's the, here's the float. And as the, if I pull up on it, you see the, the flow of sap stops, okay? And so when the pans are full, the sap, uh, you know, isn't coming in very much, okay? But as uh, evaporation occurs, you know, you see the steam coming off. Um, then the float starts to go down. It, you know, follows the water level. And, you know, if I push down a little bit just to, to show, you can see the, the sap coming in. Okay, and so that float maintains the depth of sap that are in the pans. And, uh, and as, you know, if I take off syrup out of that valve... You know, I, I drop the level in the front, okay? And so the, the sap that's in the pans, you know, goes to fill that, that decrease in height in the pans. And then the, the float will go down and more sap will enter the pans, okay? So it's a pretty neat operation. I don't have to worry too much about... Uh, you know about burning up pans because i have that float system and you know that's extremely common uh, almost all evaporators have uh, some form of float system um, sometimes your your hobby 
uh, ones won't, uh, where you have to keep an eye on it and you know add sap as you go. But uh, but this one uh, takes that operation out so that I don't have to think about it. Uh, I do keep an eye on it because if for some reason there was a piece of debris that that got into my sap tank and came down that pipe and got stuck, it could uh, you know hamper or decrease the flow of sap into the pans and you know that would cause a problem and and I could uh, you know if the sap depth gets too low in the pans then I could have I could burn a pan or scorch the you know the syrup um, obviously the most expensive thing would be burning a pan uh, and destroying a pan because um, uh, you know these all stainless steel uh, welded pans are you know they're very expensive and uh, and you can see the insulation that I have to you know keep the heat in under the pans and from going up in between the pans and so I try to keep the heat inside the arch as much as I can until it exhausts up the up the smokestack <clears throat> okay and uh, um, so hopefully that uh, answers some questions and uh, you know as far as taking off syrup um, when uh, when the thermometer gets up to well when it gets up to seven that's when there is syrup near the thermometer but I usually go a little higher than that just because when you open the valve uh, you know you get a you take off uh, you know quite a bit of, of um, syrup and sometimes it brings in some syrup from uh, you know in the the other side of the pan and and it's not quite syrup yet so so uh, you try to find the happy medium on how fast to take off and and exactly what temperature to take off but but uh, maple syrup is syrup at seven degrees uh, above the boiling point of water uh, in your area and you know i calibrate my thermometer uh, pretty much every time i boil so that so that I know what the boiling point of water is depending on um, the, the uh, atmospheric pressure or barometric pressure. And, uh, but there you go. I hope that answers some questions. And um, this is my last boil for the year. Uh, I am, my trees are shutting down uh, and aren't producing uh, quality sap anymore and my wood pile is <laughs> almost completely gone so uh you know i planned it pretty well this year um and uh basically as soon as i'm done boiling and get everything canned then i will start uh, cutting wood for uh, to feed this for next year um and a lot of times i burn slab wood from my sawmill and uh and you know i split it up into you know small pieces and because the you want your fire to burn hot and fast you don't want to build up a huge bed of coals in in the firebox because you just can't get any airflow in there and it your burn rate slows down and your burn temperature slows down so um so i just split up everything pretty small and and uh and in it goes and produces uh the delicious New York maple syrup. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you haven't, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.